Hi everyone, today we are going to cover chapter 2, Kinematics of Linear Motion. In this chapter, we have 3 subtopics. So first of all, we are going to cover 2.1, Linear Motion. Right, in this subtopic, we have two types of quantities that you have learned in chapter 1. First of all, scalar quantity where it's only have uh, magnitude and vector quantity we have magnitude and direction. Okay, so the most basic quantity is length right for this chapter so we have distance d and we have the displacement as the vector quantity the symbol is s okay so let's say we have two points point a and point b you take the long journey to reach b you can also take the shortest journey from a to b and then the longer journey that you take it called distance and then the shortest distance we call is as displacement so if we look at the actual meaning the distance is the length of actual path between two points. And then this displacement is the distance between initial point and final, posi uh, final position. Uh, to make it simple, it's the shortest distance. Lah. Okay. And then from distance, you can get speed. Okay. The symbol is V. And then from the displacement, you can get velocity. The symbol is also V. Okay. Now, uh, the meaning for the speed is the total distance, the rate of total distance travel. Meanwhile, velocity is the rate of change of displacement. Now we are going to look at the formula. Okay, the speed is the, uh, is equal to distance over time, and then the unit for distance is meter. The unit for time is second. So the unit for speed is meter per second. So for velocity is displacement over time, where the unit for displacement is also meter, and then the time is second. So the final unit is meter per second. And from velocity, you can get acceleration. Okay, so acceleration, the symbol is A. And then the acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. So A is equal to velocity over time. We know already that velocity is meter per second in unit and time is second. So when we combine the final unit, it will be meter per second square. Now let's look at the example here. An insert crawls along the edge of a rectangular swimming pool of length 27 times 21. It crawls from A to B in 30 minutes. So question A, what is average speed? We know already just now speed is equal to distance over time, right? So the distance from A to B, you need to calculate the actual journey which is 27 plus 21 okay over time time in, t in 30 minutes so the minute you need to change to second because we need everything in si unit so the final unit is meter per second and then for b what is the magnitude of its average velocity so velocity is equal to um, displacement over time the displacement is the shortest distance can the distance from uh, from initial to final so we have triangle here so how to find the a to b uh, hypotenuse so we are going to use theorem pythagoras so 27 square plus 21 square square root answer and then you get the displacement from a to b so you substitute inside the displacement and then time 30 times 60 and then you get the answer in meter per second as well very easy, very straightforward. Next, we are going to uh, learn about 2.2, Uniformly Accelerated Motion. So, in this subtopic, we have three important equations that you need to know, you need to remember. So, we have V uh, as the final velocity, U is initial velocity, A is acceleration, T is time taken, and S is the displacement. Okay, so we have S, we have T, we have A, we have U, and you have V. Okay, uh, and then it will just repeat it. Lah. Need to know which equations to use. So, example 6. A plane lands on a runway uh, at a velocity 50 meter per second and decelerate at constant rate. So, we have U, initial velocity, and decelerate mean acceleration. Lah. Okay, but we don't know. And then we have uh, the displacement travels 1 km right calculate the deceleration of the plane so a is what we want, we want to find 
So remember that we have three equations. I write it again. Plus 2AS S is equal to UT plus half AT square. So we need to determine which equations to use. Okay, so they ask you the A. Do we have um, each information? Okay, we have U. We have S. And then before stops. That means the final velocity is zero. So we have U, S and V. So can we use the first one? Uh, we have V. We have U. Do we have A? No. We, we have T? No, we don't have T as well. So we cannot use because we have two unknowns. Let's look at the second equation. We have V, we have U, we have, we don't have the A, but we have the S. So, yes, we can use the second equation. So, V square is equal to U square plus 2AS. V is 0 square is equal to 50 square plus 2. We want to find the A. Uh, S is 1 kilometer. You need to change to meter. Okay, and then you do your maths and then you get the answer in meter per second square. For B, the time taken for the plane to stop. So this one, they ask it the T. So can we use the first? We have V, we have U, we have the A from A. We don't have the T, so we use the first equation, the simplest one. 0, 50, plus, and then masukkan T, we don't have. And then do your maths again, and then we get the, the answer in second. Very easy. Okay, next we are going to enter 2.3, projectile motion. So this one is a little bit uh, crucial because we don't learn this in school before. So in projectile motion, we have three cases. Okay, for case one, let's say we have a stage and then we have a ball on the stage. And then when you kick the ball, it will fall uh, in that motion. For case two, let's say the ball is on the ground and then you kick the ball and then it will experience that motion and then for case 3 uh, we have a stage again and then we have the ball on the stage and then when we kick it it will go upward first and then it will fall in projectile motion okay so there's several things that you need to know okay in case 1 we have the initial velocity u and then we have the vertical displacement we have the horizontal displacement uh, and then for case 2 we have horizontal displacement then we have the height or the vertical displacement we have the angle and then we have the initial velocity u and then for case 3 okay we have uh, the same thing we have the height of the stage and then we have the horizontal displacement we have the vertical displacement s y and then we have the angle and then we have the initial velocity as well Case 3 is a little bit complicated, but it's okay. And to solve the projectile motion, we need to use the three equations that we have learned previously. So I write this again. And before this, we have learned to solve just one component. But for projectile motion, you, you need to use both x and y component to solve. So there's a thing that you need to know to solve uh, projectile motion. Okay, you need to know that the acceleration due to gravity or AY is equal to negative 9.81 meter per second and AX is zero because gravity is only happening in Y component and Y is negative because it's always acting downward. Right, so let's do uh, example 8. A cannonball is fired with an initial velocity of 30 and angle 35 to the horizontal. So let's draw lah so that you can see clearly. So we have a ground and cannonball and uh, you are given the U. So U is 30 meter per second and then the angle is 35 to the horizontal. Now the question is what is the maximum height reached by the ball? So they ask you to find the SY or the vertical displacement right so again like i've mentioned before we need to use the equations the three equations that we have learned so s is equal to ut plus half at square right okay we need to choose which which equation to use so let's look at the first equation 
can we use it right they asked you to find the s so we don't have the s in the first equation so that was out of option we only have the second or third right can we use the second let's look okay there's one thing that i forgot to mention in projectile motion the velocity experienced by the ball is like this okay and uh, this is u and then this is the velocity and then this is the final velocity so at the center at the top position at the height maximum height the velocity is to the right so it's only in x component so our vy is literally zero okay so the vy on the top of the motion is zero right so uh so this is okay vy equal to zero so let's look either we can use the second equation so keep, we will try an error so we know that if you want to find the sy everything need to be y as well vy uy ay and sy so we know that vy is zero at the top and the uy is right for this one we need to find a separate place u given is only um, resultant u you need to resolve it ux and uy so you have learned in school before that uh, the center is u the resultant u is u and then um horizontally you x you y on the vertical and the angle is 35 so you need to resolve to find the u y you need to use 30 sine 35 square plus 2 and then a y is negative 9.81 i have mentioned before and then s y so you do your maths and then you get the answer in meter okay and for b what is the horizontal range horizontal range is the horizontal displacement which is sx and again we need to choose which equation to use this time uh, since we know that we are finding the s so the first equation is cannot be used because there is no s in the formula it's either the second or third so let's look at the second the, f the v the final velocity is actually not zero so but we don't know what is it so it is still unknown and s is uh, unknown as well so there's two unknown that we cannot use so we only left with the third equation which is s is equal to ut plus half a t square and again when we want to find the x everything need to be x ux ax t don't have the component okay we just let it be and again uh, i repeat this again a y is negative 9.81 and ax is 0 so you can cancel out the half a x t square because it was uh, literally 0 so what's left is s x is equal to u x t we need to find the u x using the same concept just now uh, we know that u y is u sine theta so u x is u cos theta so 30 cos 35 and then t we don't have the t but since we have no other choice we need to find the t okay in projectile motion the whole journey is actually is divided into two parts and the first and second half parts is symmetrical so we only have the information in the first half where our vy on the top of the motion is zero so let's use that in our equation so we are finding the t i'm using the first equation because that was the simplest uh, the second was cannot be used because we don't have the t okay i'm using v is equal to u plus a t and since we only have the vy information so i'm using the y u y a y uh, so v y is zero and the u y is uh, 30 sine 35 30 sine 35 uh, plus negative 9.81 t because we are finding the t so from this you can find the time uh, for the first half of the projectile motion so uh, to find the final no the time the whole journey the time taken for the whole journey you need to times by 2 so 2t is equal to 2 times the answer that you get uh, from the top lah. okay so you get the time in second 
and uh, you substitute the value in the sx equations and then you get the answer something in the unit of meter that's it